a few of the homework questions that I assigned in chapter one just to kind of talk about the answers and allow you to check your answers. This question number 13 asks you to draw a correct Lewis structure and assign partial and partial positive and negative charges. So here I have the four compounds with their corresponding Lewis structures. I recognize that they're very small. Partial positives are always assigned to the least electronegative element in the bond, and the partial negative is the more electronegative element in the bond. As far as, let's uh, see, strong and weak acids, this is just knowing the list of strong and weak acids. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. The rest of these are not on that list of strong acids. Moving on to question number 14. We want to look at two chemical reactions. One is the reaction of nitrous acid with ammonia to form nitrite and ammonium. And then we actually look at the reverse of that reaction. Nitrite and ammonium react to form nitrous acid and ammonia. In the first reaction, the base is ammonia. It's acting as a base by ripping a hydrogen off of nitrous acid to produce ammonium and nitrite. I've identified the acid and the base here in this reaction. Make sure in your Lewis structure that you have the hydrogen connected to the oxygen and not to the nitrogen. This is the case with all of the oxygen containing polyatomic ions that they connect their hydrogens through oxygens and not through the central atom. There is one exception, but we're not going to talk about that one. When you're drawing Lewis structures of oxygen containing polyatomic ions that have been turned into acids, always make sure that the hydrogen is connected through the oxygen and not through the other non-oxygen atom, such as nitrogen or sulfur or phosphorus. In the reverse reaction, I just take these products and I basically just flip this whole reaction. So now the nitrite ion is acting as a base to go rip a hydrogen off of ammonium to produce ammonia and nitrous acid. Question number 15 asks us, what effect does charge have on a base strength? This is not a great question because there are other factors that you have to consider, but generally speaking, increasing the charge on the same atom under the same reaction conditions results in a stronger base. This question number 15 allows us to jump right to question number 19. And in question number 19, I had you react water with the oxide ion to produce two equivalents of hydroxide. You want to identify the acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base. And conjugate acid and conjugate base are easy because you've got two things. So one of them, whichever one you want, is the conjugate acid, and the other one is the conjugate base. In terms of the chemistry, this oxide ion must have used one of its lone pairs to rip a hydrogen off of water. And the Lewis base tells us that the thing that donates electron density which is what the oxide ion would be doing, is the base. Therefore, water is the acid. So water is the acid, oxide is the base, hydroxide is the conjugate acid and conjugate base. Predict whether reactants or products are favored at equilibrium and explain. This is a recap of question 15, where we said that if the same atom contains a more negative charge, it will be a stronger base. That means that this is the stronger base, and whichever one of these I decided to call my conjugate base is the weaker base. Equilibrium favors the formation of the weaker base. And that double-headed arrow is an insult. It sh that's, the, that's the wrong arrow to use. Um, it's hard, I think, in Word to figure out. I always forget what the hotkey command is to do the equilibrium arrows, so I cheat and use the double-headed arrows. Anyway, question 15 and question 19 are related. In question 15, you should have recognized that a more negative charge makes a stronger base. And in question 19, we apply that to say that this base with a more negative charge is stronger than whatever the conjugate base is. Therefore, equilibrium will favor the formation of products. Let's go back to question number 16. For the falling acids, give the conjugate base. So we just take a hydrogen off every time. H3O plus becomes water. HCl becomes Cl minus. Formic acid, no, acetic acid becomes acetate. Ammonium, which is NH4+, plus, becomes NH3. And methane becomes whatever this thing is called. I forget. CH3 minus. It's, it's really hard to make. So that's why I don't know the name of it. All right, now it's asking a uh, number of the conjugate bases in order of increasing base strength, where one is the weakest and five is the strongest. And actually the easiest way to answer this question is to ignore the conjugate bases that you just drew and go back to these original acids right here. 
because if you know what the weakest or strongest acid is, then you should also know what the strongest or weakest conjugate base is. So instead of ordering the bases in terms of increasing strength, I'm actually going to label these acids in terms of increasing strength and just kind of invert my reasoning when I talk about the bases. So for example, hydrochloric acid is the only strong acid on here. Therefore, its conjugate base should be the weakest base. And that's why the chloride ion gets the number one. It's the weakest base because it comes from the strong acid, the strongest acid. The second strongest acid on this table should be H3O+. Remember that H3O+, is how we define strong acids. And so therefore, its conjugate base would be the second weakest base. So the one goes with chloride, the two goes with water. The remaining three, this is the remaining three, this is a carboxylic acid with a pKa in the ballpark of five. Ammonium is a nitrogen with a positive charge and a pKa in the ballpark of nine to 10. And methane is a, it's a carbon bound to hydrogens. So let's talk about these two first. If this has a pKa of five and this has a pKa of nine, then the carboxylic acid is a stronger acid. If it is a stronger acid, then its conjugate base should be weaker. So this tells us that this base is weaker than ammonia because it comes from a stronger acid. Hydrocarbons, such as alkanes, are incredibly weak acids. In fact, if you were to talk about an alkane acting as an acid, uh, an educated audience member would kind of be confused that you're even thinking about alkanes as acid. Their pKa values are in the ballpark of 60. And so a conjugate base of something that is such a weak acid will be an incredibly strong base. Now let's talk about the hardest questions on here, 17 and 18, and maybe 17 wasn't hard for you. This was asking you to estimate the pKa values of the most acidic hydrogens in these compounds, and this is essentially a review of those five pKa values that you need to memorize. Specifically, a nitrogen that contains a neutral charge typically has a pKa in the ballpark of 38 or 36. I, it, I think it's 38 and I end up saying 36 often enough that I confuse myself. The issue is both of those numbers are so very high and so very different from the pKa's of other compounds that we run into that it doesn't matter which one you pick, it's always gonna tell you the same information. This nitrogen with a positive charge typically has a pKa in the ballpark of 9 to 10. Here we have an alcohol with a pKa around 16. Uh, this is similar to the hydronium ion. It's an oxygen that carries a positive charge. It's essentially a protonated alcohol. It, it is. It's not essentially. It is a protonated alcohol and has a pKa of about negative 2. And finally, we have a carboxylic acid here. This is propanoic acid, and its pKa would be around 5. Actually, I think I wrote down the values. Um, so here, the pKa of this first one is close to 39. This next one right here is a pKa of 10.66. This one is worth talking about. The presence of the fluorine will significantly withdraw electron density. Halogens are electron withdrawing groups. That means they pull electron density towards themselves and away from the acidic hydrogen. This weakens the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen and makes it more acidic. And your pKa is 14.42, which is quite low for an alcohol. If you had more fluorines on there, you would expect it to get even lower. Uh, this compound is about a negative 2. It's a negative 2.2. And then we have um, propanoic acid. It has a pKa of 4.86. And this is going to be relevant for the question down here, number 18. But as you continue to add more hydrocarbons, you actually increase the amount of electron density on the hydrogen because they're electron donating groups and your pKa would go up. It's a logarithmic scale, so going from a 4.76 to a 4.86 is not a rounding issue. Like that's, That actually means something. I, it's in the ballpark of um, about twice as less acidic if you go up by a tenth of a unit. Okay, now 18. This one is meant to be very challenging. In fact, I would have a hard time justifying putting this question in its entirety on an exam. And I will tell you the questions I do like about this and some of the comparisons that are important. So I gave you two of these just to kind of get you started with their pKa values and an explanation. And then I asked you to find homes for the rest of these pKa values. The most important comparison are these three right here. 
you have the carboxylic acid that contains a chlorine. This would be chloroacetic acid, fluoroacetic acid, and iodoacetic acid. Not names you have to know, but let's call it by a name. The most acidic of these three is the one that contains the fluorine. And a common point of confusion is that students will say that the iodine is the most acidic because it's the furthest down the periodic table. And that comparison is only valid if the acidic hydrogen is directly connected to the halogen. So remember that when the acidic hydrogen, in this case the underlined H, is connected to the same atom, in all cases it's an oxygen then you don't care about the spatial relationship, you only care about the electronegativity of the neighbors. If instead the hydrogen were to be directly connected to the halogen, then we do care about the relationship on the periodic table and moving down would make it a stronger acid. But it's not, it's not directly connected. It is directly connected to an oxygen every time. And since the charges are the same, then the category we look at is the electronegativity of its neighbors. Fluorine's the most electronegative, followed by chlorine, then iodine. So even if you don't have these numerical values, you should absolutely be able to put these in correct order. And so the number values are not the part of this that I would put on an exam, but I would definitely drop these three compounds on the exam and ask you to list them from strongest to weakest. And that's just based on electronegativity. Now let's skip this one for a second and jump down to the bottom one. In this case, the hydrogen is connected to the same oxygen as we've seen every time. And one of the rules says that if the charges are different, the more positive is a stronger acid, and therefore the more negative is a weaker acid. So you should have assigned the highest value to the one that carries the negative charge. Now let's look at the most extreme case, and this is a case where we put three chlorines on there. You should absolutely identify that this compound here is more acidic than the one that just has one chlorine. Now, knowing that three chlorines has a larger impact than a single fluorine is a lot to ask, and that's I wouldn't feel great about giving this to you on an exam. I might actually give you one that had no chlorines, then one that had one chlorine, two chlorines, three chlorines, and then ask you to put them in correct order. So this is not necessarily a great comparison to ask you to make, but it's a homework and not an exam. And so what you learn from this is that the presence of multiple halogens significantly lowers your pKa. And that's an important lesson to learn. The final one is this chlorine that's out on the end of two CH2 groups. We're going to learn later on that CH2 groups are referred to as methylene groups. So we have a carboxylic acid, two methylene groups, and a chlorine. We're going to compare that to a carboxylic acid, one methylene group, and a chlorine. The further the chlorine is from the acidic hydrogen, the weaker its effect is. The chlorine lowers the pKa because it's electronegative. If the chlorine is further away, then you would expect it to be less acidic. So you should absolutely be able to identify that this compound right here is a weaker acid than the one that contains a chlorine that's closer. Now, we also should know that the fluorine is a stronger acid than the chlorine. So if I gave you these three on an exam, I would expect you to put them in the correct order. The fluorine would be the most acidic because it's closest and most electronegative. Then the chlorine that's close would be the second most acidic, and the chlorine that's further away would be the third most acidic. It is not necessarily a fair comparison to ask students to compare these two because in this one right here, the iodine, which is not as electronegative, and that would be a weaker acid, but it's closer, so that would be a stronger acid. Here, the chlorine is more electronegative, so that would be a stronger acid, but it's further away, so it's a weaker acid. And so knowing that these two are different um, is obvious because they have a different structure, but knowing which one is more or less acidic is actually a difficult comparison to make. Um, a lot of times, students will just Google the structures of these ones, put the, put the pKa values down there, and they're usually smart enough not to put, I Googled it over here in the explanation part. But this is the correct order. Um, definitely an example worth spending some time thinking about. There are some comparisons on here that are very challenging, probably beyond what I would expect you to do, but you should definitely be able to compare these three with each other. Right here, the three halogen containing ones. You should also be able to compare a halogen that's further away to a halogen that's closer. That's a fair comparison. 
multiple halogens versus fewer halogens. That's an important idea. And then negative charges. 